I will be ranking these characters based on how much I like them, and I will also be factoring in, you know, plot significance, you know, how much weight did they carry in the story, but mostly just how I felt about them. So there's not a lot of characters, so I think four tiers shall suffice. I'm just going to be picking them randomly, just who, who do we start with? We'll start with the dog. I thought the dog was pretty cool. Um... Not exactly the most powerful. Well, actually, in terms of gameplay, I, he actually is one of the most powerful. But in the overarching story, he's cool. He doesn't speak English. He's good for me. Okay, cool. Who's next? Chidori. We'll do you. I thought she was uh, pretty great. Um, wasn't there for too long, but definitely had a major impact on Junpei. Uh, she didn't... Like, you see her like a few times before she actually talks, but she literally didn't say a word when she was with Jin and Takaya, which is like, okay, well, what's going on with this girl? So she was kind of mysterious for a while, and then for one reason or another, she kept to herself, but opened up to Junpei of all people. So definitely uh, was responsible for a lot of character development for our boy Junpei. So now we have, since my uh, mouse was right here, Yuko. Pretty cool. I thought that she had, yeah, perhaps the best voice actress in the entire game. Brought a lot of charisma. I liked her. We've got this random girl. So you're going to see a trend here where with pretty much all of, like, the people that are, like, you know, you can form social links with, uh, they're probably going to be considered A-OK -okay for me. That's what C-tier is. OK, average, didn't get to know them too well. Because the only people that I maxed out the social link with to 10 was Igus, Yukari, Mitsuru, and Fuka. So, a lot of these people don't really know him too well. And I know she had some problems with her parents. This guy is literally dying. This dude wants to, you know, build some kind of sewing fashion. I, I don't know. This guy at a bookstore. They want to chop down his tree. I think his grandson perished in a car accident or whatever if you couldn't tell didn't really bond with these people too well this guy had some knee issues on the track team this guy i almost got him to 10 he was at nine i believe i don't know why i spent so much time with him i didn't even really like him to be honest um just an art guy his dad wanted him to be a doctor oh okay here's a good one for, for all the party members like people that you know i think uh this kid Ken, I barely even remembered his name. I never used him. He's going down here in the A-OK -okay average tier. I just thought that, um... Oh, where do I even begin with this kid? Like, it was like, he, it was like, he was, he wasn't an average, like, 10-year-old kid or whatever. He was kind of mature, but then he was kind of immature when it came to the thing with Shinji, I thought. But, you know, obviously he's just a kid, whatever. But, uh, I never, like aspired to be like this child i never wanted to look up to him i didn't really learn too much from him i learned what not to do but you know what i did learn from i learned from elizabeth i learned to have a good time elizabeth uh goofiest character in the game funniest most humorous i don't even know how old this girl is like i want to believe she's like maybe early mid 20s but I, and I have not looked up anything for these characters, by the way, but I just have a feeling she's like 5,000 years old, but whatever. Apparently, I guess she's got siblings from other Persona games that are also these elevator attendants, and she's the middle child, so I guess that's why she is the way she is. Maybe she didn't get enough attention as a child, but uh, very lovable character. Um, this is after me, obviously, beating the game already. Spoilers, you know. I don't know. Just in case, gotta say spoiler alert, right? But uh, Elizabeth, I didn't actually do this, but I stumbled upon it from just looking at random things. I guess she's also a boss fight, too. She's literally, like, the hardest enemy in the game, and, like, I kind of saw a little bit of it, and I'm like, dude, like, I thought the Reaper was bad. Elizabeth would be unstoppable for me, so... It's kind of a cool thing how they made her a boss, and, of course, I... Even though she wasn't, like, really into the weeds with the actual main story, she was just kind of there on the side, but I, I thought she was very, very entertaining. A lot of personality. Big heart. Okay, we're going to do this crook next. Um, I remember that this guy gives you the devil arcana. That's everything you need to know about him. You've got this random guy. I think I got to know him the absolute least out of everyone in this entire game. I don't know what his, his shtick was. Like, I just kind of met him after... He mopped the floor with me at that track meet, and then we were just buddies. 
Um, this guy, this raging alcoholic at the club, same thing. Didn't really get to know his thing. I think, like, his wife and kids or something left. I don't know. If you couldn't tell, like, basically there's an overarching theme with, like, everyone has attachments and then they lose them and then... Yeah, it's actually... If you really want to get into the weeds of it, it's... Th that full arcana, I learned... And, at, like, when you fight the final dude, that it goes, like, the full arcana all the way to the death arcana. That's supposed to be, like, a personification of all human life, as it always has been. How you start off the journey as a complete idiot, and you don't know what you're doing. And then you get wiser and wiser, and then you hit death. Dude, this guy's knocking on death's doorstep. Poor guy. Alright, so I'm looking down here, and the characters are starting to get a lot more interesting now that I weed them out. Oh, wait. Hold on. You... I didn't hate you, but uh, you see, this is the AOK -okay average tier. He was kind of close, man. I'm not gonna make a whole nother tier just for him, but uh, he was just ugh. I didn't like hanging out with him. And oh, this kid too. I can't remember any of these guys' names, but this dude. I don't know what his thing was. He just wanted to get with uh, that one teacher who's actually right here. Is this the teacher? I think it is. He wanted to get with some teacher, which. By the way, uh, this teacher... No, no, I actually am going to bump her up to B. I thought she had a slightly more significance than these people. Well, actually, she definitely didn't have more significance than Ken. But I liked her more than Ken, so I'm going to put her up there. But uh, it turns out that she's uh, this person right here. Who, you know, for the longest time didn't know who she was. So I'm just going to leave it there. But once again, I, I didn't max out her social strength. So I only discovered that that was her from, uh, you know, the power of accidental spoilers from... Uh, you know, the internet and the YouTubes and whatever. Okay, now we're starting to get into the actual really good stuff. Wait, hold on. Nope. Mr. Uh, Treasure Secretary, I don't even know what your thing was. Okay, this guy. This guy's name was, I think it was Ikutsuki. This may have actually been my most hated character in the entire game, but he did have some significance to the story. You know, admittedly, he wasn't... Too much. He kind of just showed up in the end, or towards the end, was like, "Oh, I'm I'm the bad guy." He was a, he was not good at being the bad guy, but he was a bad guy. Kind of stupid. It kind of made me angry. How like, you know, the biggest question to me about this guy was those jokes, dude. Like, do you think he actually thought that they were funny, or was that just part of the the shtick to you know to debate you and drop your guard so he could you know emotionally manipulate you and get you to do what he wants? Like, that's all I want to know. Like, was, was his sense of humor that god-awful or what? <sighs> Pharos, the mysterious boy. I shall leave you here. He's a tricky one to rate because he's like five different characters in one, you know? Just, I, if I didn't already say it already, uh, spoiler alerts. And even I don't really understand this. It's a little complicated. But he's basically like... Like the Death Archon, he's like Thanatos, he's this kid, he's Pharos, he's a mysterious boy, he's a random kid that shows up in my bedroom at night, he's, he's like, it's, it's, you wake up in the middle of the night and he's just there staring at you, like, that's so creepy, and then, and then Ryoji, the connection with him, and he's basically him, and then Nyx, and, but the point is, when you see this kid, just showing up all the time, just, you know, a week before the full moon, this specific character, I didn't really like him, but he was, uh, he definitely stood out. I mean, he stood out more than whatever this guy's name was right here, the track dude. Okay, moving up, Jin. I think he was, he was good. Uh, lot, left a lot to be desired. He was kind of just riding Takaya's you-know-what the whole entire game. I think he could have been cool. When, he, when we first meet, like, Strega... Like, that scene where there's the three of them in that back alley, and then Takaya shoots that one guy. He actually kind of caught my interest. He was titled Intelligent Boy, and you could tell he was, you know, kind of sharp. It was just kind of dumb. I, like, the whole entire game, like, his whole life is just dedicated to Takaya. And I just thought that was kind of dumb. But, once again, stood out, you know. Important. Semi-important. There was kind of a theme, though, where, you know, since I'm talking about Strega, let's just do a Takai. I'll put him in A. But one of the things, it's not really a gripe or even a con. It's just that I kind of wish that Strega was more overwhelming. They were just saying that they were an underwhelming force is kind of an understatement. 
they just didn't really do too much. I thought they were going to do so much more than they, they kind of were important, like, you know, towards the end, the cult and all that. But like when, but like when you're playing the game, you know, Takai and Jin forming this cult or whatever on the internet doesn't actually impact your life at all. Like you just hear about it when you get back to the drum, you're like, oh, okay. You know, that makes sense. Those two weirdos would do something like that, but whatever. Takai is moving up here, though, just because I will say, out of everyone in this game, he might have the most based takes there is. He is pretty smart. Like, he's not, he's not foolish. He's not naive, gullible. He's definitely not senile, even though he kind of just looks like a, you know, he kind of looks like Jesus with a gun, but this guy is nowhere near as old as Jesus, so we can't call him senile. He's a very young man, apparently. Ah, oh, man, I, just, I, sometimes, I sometimes just think, like, how old are these characters? Because it's got, like, an anime video game, so, like, a 20-year-old a character like him or something could be, like, 10. Whatever, that's enough of Takaya. I don't want this video to take too long. Alright, so, we'll do Mitsuru's dad. I don't even remember this guy's name. You know, if I can't remember your name, I can't put you too high. He was a very, um compelling force kind of when we meet him but we don't really get to know him too well but we understand that he's kind of sort of semi kind of responsible didn't really have a hand in that one experiment with the shadows where they blew up they ran away whatever but like he 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 was aware of it he didn't really talk about it too much but it wasn't really his job because i'd say mitsuru i mean mitsuru is the one that knew us so if anyone would bring it up i'd say mitsuru i'm gonna put her in a um she had some interesting character development. In the beginning, she's kind of comes off as like this rich girl. Well, no, she is a rich girl. That's not that's not for debate. She is very rich. I wouldn't say she's spoiled, she, but she's very well mannered. She she's kind of like the original OG leader before uh, Makoto Yuki comes by, aka you, aka the MC, aka the protagonist, aka David. In my situation. She's, you know, kind of a leader, head of the student council or whatever. She gives speeches, very mature. And then as the game kind of progresses, we kind of see her more human side where, like, she, you know, she she's not... Uh, what do you know, guys? The the god can bleed and, like... And then, and then, hold on, guys, if you haven't already clicked off from the spoilers. More spoilers if you haven't played the whole entire game. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, this guy, his, her dad, he died, right? And that was not good for her. And then... She kind of went into a slump after that for like, I don't even remember. She was gone for a while. Like, all the characters have tragic, you know, moments. But I think she was gone along as perhaps maybe two weeks or so. And then Yukari literally slapped sense into her. And then they kind of formed a bond. It was, it was just interesting because no, I would have never thought somebody would slap this woman in the face. But somebody did do it. So, you know, she was crying. All that stuff. Never seen stuff like that. So... Interesting character development. I'm gonna be honest. I forgot your name. I liked you, but I can't remember your name, so I can't put you much higher. She, when you first meet this girl, she's just terrified of like literally every single boy, just because of reasons. And then you know, romantic relationship. You know, normal Persona MC stuff. Apparently, by the way, this is the only Persona I've ever played in my entire life, so I don't really know much about the series. Oh man, so many good picks to go with. I'm gonna pick. Fuka next. I understand that she didn't really have too much importance in the story. You know, in terms of the party members, I would say she's only slightly more important than maybe like like this kid Ken and the dog. Even though I like the dog, he can't speak English, so I can't give him too much points, right? We literally can't communicate with him without I guess. I just liked her a lot. Her her backstory is kind of not quite it. I just thought she was a very sweet kind-hearted, wholesome person, and she is the navigator, so I'm going to put her as a pretty above-average uh, character, Junpei. Yeah, I'm going to put him up here, too. You know, if, if you watched my Let's Play, I kind of tease him a lot and make fun of him, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't actually hate him. I don't know if, what people thought of that, but I was just joking. He, um, he also kind of goes through some interesting character development. He kind of starts off as just a class clown, you know, whatever. You know, goofy and uh, kind of, um, you know, he, he likes girls a lot, like too much, right? So that's all I got to say about that. 
But once again, Chidori. Well, no, another thing too is uh, I I didn't like this about him, but it is important for him as a you know his significance as a character. Is he kind of starts off as like you know he's more or less kind of egotistical and he wants to take all the credit for everything and you know he's a little delusional. He thinks he's the leader over Makoto, who's you know has the power of the universe in his hands. So yeah, quite delusional. Makes a lot of impulsive mistakes. I would say like the monorail incident after that one hotel incident. He didn't really do anything bad, but he, you know, after all was said and done, he kind of just was really immature and childish and ran off because we, we aren't like recognizing him as the hero. Definitely had a hero complex for sure. By the way, in the movie, he actually does kind of do stupid things in um, that hotel. I didn't actually watch the movie, but I saw one scene on it on YouTube. Um, and then, and then he meets Chidori. Uh, <laughs> totally just changed him as a person uh never really seen something like this with junpei he i remember he even admitted to her when uh he got caught by her because he <laughs> he was lying to her to impress her and said oh yeah i'm the hero so she was like oh this is this is the leader of this uh seas team okay i'll just go capture him and then he just admitted he's like oh yeah i'm not actually him so that was pretty um Mature for once, a lot of character development, and then she, you know, went bye bye forever. So he definitely went through one of the most profound character transformations in the whole game. Honestly, he, I, I will be honest though, I don't think he's my favorite character, but he is a good character. He's no, he's a great character, an important character. Who's next? We've only got six characters left. I'm gonna do Yukari. Kind of the same reasons as like these other characters, like Mitsuru, for example. Like she was uh, in a weird contemplative state for a good chunk of the early to mid game, where like she had a very tight relationship with her father, and then you know that guy died because of the shadows experiment, which was conducted by this person's uh, grandfather, I believe. And you know it was kind of like she kept thinking like why am I doing this why am I fighting for this like why am I listening to her she yeah th there was a lot of um um friction between these two for a while well she wasn't actually aware of it because she was kind of the leader but she always saw her as like this you know arrogant boss and didn't actually care about people and like well oh, why why is Mitsuru always keeping to herself but there there were she had her reasons and all that but yeah she was in. She was walking a fine line between what is actually right and wrong. Like, another thing is when we recruited Fuka, she's like, was that actually the right thing? So, definitely had her morals and, uh, yeah, all that good stuff questioned for a hot minute. So, and then, of course, obviously, um, then we get that one, uh, that recording. I don't know who brought it, but somebody got that recording of her father and... You know, she had, he had a last good words for her, and then she's like, alright, I'm, I'm full sending it, I'm, I'm all about this, let's go stop evil, whatever. So that was cool. Okay, we got five left down here. Who should we do? Let's do Shinji. Pretty, um, uh, pretty great character, I'd say. Um, this guy was kind of like, to me, I, when I first met him, I'm like, okay, who the hell is this guy? And then he, he kind of, and then you kind of, they don't even explicitly say it in the story, which I thought was really smart, whoever wrote this thing. Um, it's a little detailed, it's subtle, but it, the player themselves can obviously reason and connect the dots by themselves and tell that Shinji used to be a part of um, C's. He was the OG3, him, Mitsuru, and Akihiko. And Akihiko is basically going behind the scenes. He's not really doing anything nefarious. He's just talking to him, trying to get him you know, back. But nobody actually knows about Shinji other than Akihiko Mitsuru. It's, it's not like some kind of secret. I would say that whole Shadows thing, you know, about where they came from and all that. I think that's more of a secret. This is kind of like, you know, business that does not concern Makoto and um, all these newer people. Shinji was basically, you know, the bridge and kind of like, to me, an extension of Akihiko's story. Um... Not so much Mitsuru. He's kind of like, they won't say it, but him and Akiko are pretty much besties. You know, I guess they grew up in the orphanage together and went through some trials and tribulations and what have you. So, there's just so many thoughts going through my head. I don't want to, like, ramble forever on each and every character, or else this video is going to take forever. But, uh, I did, I, he definitely got done dirty, for sure. 
and then he was uh, part of what I believe uh, literally the saddest scene in the entire game, which I'll get to in a few moments. It, it's not when he, you know what, it's the thing after that. Um, very, not, yeah, 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 kind of older brother vibes like Akihiko, but uh, sort of like more disciplined. He doesn't like to goof off. Neither does Akihiko, but Akihiko is kind of more reckless. He's kind of more like, um, um, kind of a more serious, focused, um, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't like to joke around. He's very, like, the way he cares about his, you know, people he likes, you know, it's different, you know, we'll call it tough love, right? Like, I, I thought the most wholesome moments with this guy is when you would cook with him and you turn out that he's basically, you learn that he's basically a, like a professional chef. So I thought that was kind of funny. All right, so I think we're down to the final four. And as I was kind of weeding them out, I was basically subconsciously going from bottom to top, where Elizabeth was just chilling here forever for the longest time. Uh, we'll do Makoto next. Makoto is literally the MC protagonist. Now, I don't know too much about Persona, like I've already admitted earlier, but I'm aware that this guy is uh, pretty important. You know, the whole, the seal and all that. This guy basically holds everyone together. He connects with all these characters. All these characters like him. Even this weird Takaya Jesus guy. He respects Makoto in the least. Even Elizabeth literally had a love interest for this guy. And yeah, every girl had a love interest for this guy. So, he can wield a million personas. He's kind of really emo, which I like strong determined had a tragic past like for the first half of the game i was like if you asked me how he did in the first half i probably would have put him in like b but as we get t closer and closer towards the end um you know the thing w my eyes kind of like opened up more when we kind of uh the revelations on that bridge when you defeat the final shadow and you realize that oh, i guess went to go stop that uh the death guy and then sealed it inside him and then and then that's kind of the connection between, you know, Makoto and Igus, and then that's what led up to all the main events in Persona 3, so he's kind of like, this guy's kind of a big deal, right? So, and how, we cannot deny that he has, for sure, the best facial expression in the game. Uh, this is literally his only expression. I don't think I've ever seen him smile. Wait, that's not correct. The final, final, final ending of Persona 3, he does smile when he's in Igus' lap. I guess his lap. Um, that's about it. That's the most emotion I've ever seen him express. He just, um, you know, parents went bye-bye from a young age, so he had to learn to be tough and strong. So that's it for Makoto. I keep saying I'm going to not take forever with these characters' descriptions, but here I am taking forever. We're going to do Akihiko next. Akihiko may actually be my favorite character in the whole game. He's, I kind of talked about him a little bit with Shinji. He's basically the older brother backbone of the group. Uh, when he was a kid, not when um, it went, yeah, when he was a kid, adolescent, young teenager, whatever, at the orphanage, uh, his younger sister died, and then I guess Shinji knew these guys too, and they were all, you know, buddy, buddy, whatever. So then Akihiko basically kind of blamed it on himself, you know, kind of, I don't want to say imposter syndrome, but basically, it, we've kind of seen this kind of story before where it's like, I was not strong enough to defend. My younger sister, because uh, I believe it, it's not explicitly said, but I guess she she most likely died in a fire because he does say an orphanage burned down when he was talking to Shinji. The way he expresses his uh, love and passion is kind of like Shinji's tough love. Uh, a pretty compelling moment for this character, I thought, was when uh, Shinji basically showed up at the hospital when they were interrogating Chidori. He left once he kind of revealed that he had drugs. Um, and he had those drugs to kind of keep his persona under control because he got out of control and, you know, the thing with Ken, blah, 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 you already know. And then this guy basically confronts him and is like, why the hell are you always like this? And literally just punches him in the face. So, yeah, very, uh, tough brotherly love. He also, needless to say, went through tough character developments. And, uh, oh, now I remember, I, I, I almost forgot. He, th this was literally the saddest scene in the game for me. When he went to uh, the funeral by himself. Like, the dude waited for, he skipped school. Like, this is not his style. He doesn't do that. He's not a delinquent. He's very, like, you know, 
well put together and you know academically there and he just he just waited for everyone to be gone i was like oh when i saw that coming i was like oh man this is gonna be a rough scene to watch and and he skipped school too to go eat ramen that's literally what shinji would do like that's why it was so important like the, whoever wrote that part was a genius so he, he just goes there and just and then he just starts crying and we've never seen akiko break down like that before very very touching moment so that's enough Akiko. We'll be here forever. Um, perhaps. No, 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 no. I'll do I guess last. Let's do Ryoji. You know, when I first met this guy, I did not like him at all. Uh, he was kind of like a Dollar General version of Junpei to me. Like he was just all about girls and kind of a class clown. To me, he was kind of a class clown, but he was kind of a uh, portrayed as more of a playboy sort of thing. And, you know, like, when you first hear about this new kid, all the girls are like, oh, man, did you did you see him? And then you kind of meet him. I was expecting more of a jock, but not not quite this. I, th I don't remember if it was, like, the first or day or so, but he takes you to the music room, and he kind of reveals that he's able to play an instrument, which kind of revealed to me that uh, he's, uh, you know, he's not, like, intellectually stupid, you know. He has a brain, he has charm, he has charisma, he has a personality, he just might not, it, it, he's probably not very forthcoming with his feelings. So, so <clears throat> in the beginning, I didn't like him. And then I realized, okay, there's something interesting about him. But the thing that stood out to me the most when I guess met him and he said, you're dangerous. So I'm like, okay, this is a bad guy. I thought he was like the leader of Strega or something. But uh, no, he's, he doesn't even know why he is the bad guy, which to me, I, I just thought that was interesting. I feel like I could just make a video alone just talking about this guy if i really wanted to comment down below because antagonists in stories to me are probably one of if not my favorite thing because without you know a force it's like what why are we even here and he was a very interesting force because he kind of starts as a friend and then ends as you know i guess the bad guy a pseudo bad guy he even try to save everyone and be like hey guys you you don't want to fight nicks dude it's it ain't worth it that, that person dude no you're gonna get blown out of the water and then he even offers his own life and all that. So, and then many, many more things. I don't want to get into the philosophical things like the whole fool arcana and all that. And and everyone knows if you played this game that the arcana is the means by which all is revealed, right? So that's enough for Ryoji. I thought he was um he went through like maybe the most uh, back and forth character development. It's almost like a Kind of like a Sasuke Uchiha kind of thing, where he doesn't really know what, what's going on. Is he the good guy? Is he the bad guy? Or what? And then I'll end with Igus. Igus, to me, I've already said Akihiko is probably my favorite, although it could change between any of these characters. But Igus, I do think, is the most fascinating character to me in Persona, <clears throat> in Persona 3 Reload. She starts off as literally just some robot who was, you know, literally just meant to exterminate shadows. Boom. That was her whole purpose in life. But then things get more complicated. She she has um, a desire to be with uh, Makoto. You don't know why. I mean, I already told you why. Hopefully you didn't find that out and get spoiled right now. And hopefully you already knew that. But yeah, <clears throat> she was she was sent out to go stop uh, this guy, actually. You know, 10 years ago, whatever, and, and then sealed him inside of him. Then she feels kind of responsible and then, you know, and then I really like the arc where she, uh, shortly after joining, she, <laughs> she, she pretends to be a high school student so that she can be more human and learn our ways. Um, I thought that was very flattering. So it's like she's a robot, but she's trying to be human. So she's kind of walking a fine line between life, I suppose. And then um, I actually thought the second saddest scene in the entire game was with her. And nobody probably even remembers it, but it's the scene where after she comes back from uh, fighting uh, Ryoji on the bridge after the final shadow, she kind of, she was gone for a week and then she comes back and is like, she's just very like depressed and just is almost sounding kind of like nihilistic and is questioning what's, the, why am I here? She was like, why am I even here? Why'd I come back here? I, my purpose was to go defeat shadows or whatever, and I couldn't do it. So I'm basically useless. Why am I here? And then, um... Shortly after that, then you can develop a bond with her relationship. And I did, in fact, max it out. So we got to know, I guess, a lot. 
And she basically... I can't... I don't even know why exactly she has a persona, but maybe it's because she has, like, human-like qualities from the very beginning, but they lie dormant or whatever. But she went through, I believe, the most uh, fascinating character transformation in the whole game, where she's pretty much basically human by the end, even though she's a robot. But uh, she understands, like, emotions and all that. She talks to you like a normal person. Yeah, that's another thing. The way she talks actually changes. Like, in the very beginning, she's like, beep, bop, boop, I will destroy you. And then she just sounds like... Like, you can't even tell the difference. She sounds like all these girls, right? She just sounds like a more, like, a calmer, docile, you know, person that, uh, you get a sense of serenity from her. Okay, so I think that should be it. I, I've been rambling forever. It was, man, I thought this was going to be quick. I was running through this tier list like nothing. Or, I mean, this tier. And then it just got more complicated and more complicated, and then boom. So... What do you guys think? Like I said, this is literally based on how much I liked them slash, you know, kind of how important they were. Um, I don't know if there's any super hot base takes. I mean, I think this looks pretty fair. Probably the eyes of most people, I would imagine. The only thing questionable, I would say, in probably other people's eyes is uh, just down here. Just because, you know, I have... <laughs> The only people I maxed out were, were basically the girls in uh, the dorm, right? So, you know, maybe you like the character down here, but I, I didn't get to connect with them too much. I, I met all of them and probably got around halfway through all of them. You know, like with this guy, I got to rank nine, but uh, didn't actually max out the whole story. So, you know, they didn't really touch me the way that some of these other characters did. So that should be it. I hope you enjoyed. Like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like the video, then just don't like it. Or I get, eh, you can dislike it if you want, if it was that bad. I understand. Criticism, it's legit. Uh, okay. And, and comment down below, like, any spots, any, any questionable takes that I had, because I'm interested in uh, other people's opinions. Maybe I am going crazy. But, I mean, there's no way Jin should be S-tier, right? Alright, well, I'll see you later. Bye.